Yo, what up everybody? My name is Justin. I'm a clinical exercise physiologist working in Colorado. Today I made a YouTube video that's going to go over how you're going to want to prepare, study, and pass the ACSM CP exam. So the very first thing from the start is you're going to want to check to see if you've been qualified to take the exam. Before you can register for the exam, you have to fill out an application that verifies all your education and clinical hours. That way you can even qualify to take the exam. So first things first, you want to check to make sure you qualify. How you check to see if you qualify for the exam is you can simply go on the ACSM website and you can go under the CEP exam and you're going to find this document but it's going to go over the requirements that make you eligible to take the exam. So there's two different pathways that you can take to qualify to take the CEP exam. The first pathway, pathway A, is to have a master's degree by an accredited school along with 600 hours of hands-on clinical experience. It has to be hands-on. It's not going to be observational hours. So pathway B, which is the pathway that I personally took, is to have your bachelor's degree by an accredited school and you need to have 1,200 of hands-on clinical hours. Regardless of pathway A or B, you're also going to need to have your BLS CPR certification. So that's just something to keep in mind as well. Before I took the CEP exam, I was already working as a cardiac rehab exercise physiologist. I had just about 1,200 hours of hands-on experience just in that realm altogether. Um, but I did a lot of other healthcare professions leading up to that point, which gave me a little bit of extra background knowledge going into the exam. Once you know that you have the qualified experience to take the exam, what you do is you fill out an application, which you can find on their website. You fill it all the way out and then you send it to them. I just scanned it in and sent it to the required email to review my qualifications. And then it gets approved or denied. And then once it gets approved, you get a voucher that you pay for that gives you the authority to take the exam. So the cost of the exam, it's $350 for non-ACSM members. That's just what I did. If you are an ACSM member, I do know it's cheaper, but I just, I'm not a member, so I just paid the flat fee of $350. When you sign up for the exam, you're going to pick a date and time when you're gonna take the exam, and you can do it at home on your own laptop. You'd have to download like a lockdown browser of some kind, like they'd have you do in college, um, and it's a proctored exam. So you're gonna have a proctor, and you're gonna do the whole thing at home on the computer. Or, if you're like me and don't like doing tests like that, I like going to an actual testing center. So you can put in your location, where you're located at, and then the website will find you the closest testing center, and then you just bring the credentials that you need to the testing center, and you take the exam. When you schedule the exam, it's important to have a time frame. That way you have enough time to study for the exam. So what I did is I already had a timeline in mind of when I'd want to take the exam. So I gave myself about four to five months of good study time. You know, everyone's gonna be a little bit different. Some people are gonna be more comfortable. They might think, okay, I'm only gonna need two months to study for the exam. Other people, they might wanna do an entire year for the exam, depending on the experience that you already have and how comfortable you are with the material. After you've scheduled the exam and you have your exam date, the next thing you want to do is you want to get the materials that you're going to need to study for the exam. You're really going to only need two books to study for this exam. The most important book is going to be this guy right here. This is the Guidelines for Exercise Testing and Prescription. It's the 11th edition. This is the, new, the newest edition in the Guidelines series. Pretty much all of the exam questions are going to be coming straight out of this guy right here. So. This is the very most important book that you're going to want to at least have when you're studying. I would say the second most important book to have when you're studying is going to be this guy right here. This is just the certification review booklet. So basically everything in this, it's just questions, practice questions that are going to be similar to questions that are on the real exam. It's not going to have any questions that are identical, but there's going to be a lot of similar. So those are the main two books that you're going to want to at least purchase to study. Um, if you're really worried about, you know, not having enough content or experience kind of in the exercise physiology realm, you can get this one too. This is just the resources for the exercise physiologist exam. This is the third edition for the resource book. But I would say when I did my studying, I pretty much just did the guidelines and the certification. So one thing that's really helpful for studying for the exam is knowing what 
percentage of the content is going to be on the exam. So if you go to ACSM's website, they have a CP exam outline. So this goes over the domains on what's going to be on the exam. The four biggest domains that you're going to want to study for are going to be patient assessment, exercise testing, exercise prescription, and then exercise training and leadership. Those are all about 20%, so a nice even chunk there. There is a, there's also an education and behavior change domain that's about 10% and then a legal responsibilities domain that's about 5%. Those ones are going to be a little bit less important in a way because they're going to be not as much on the test. So knowing the content going into the exam before I even studied anything, um, I already knew which domains are going to be the most prominent in the exam. So when I get to those chapters, those are going to be what I'm going to want to focus on the most. What I did when I studied for the exam, honestly, I just read through this whole book. Um, knowing all the content is going to be coming straight out of this book, I just read through the whole thing and took notes. Again, it took me about four months to do it. Um, but again, I knew that all the content was going to be right in here. So I read through it all and took, mo or took notes of the most important aspects of the guideline. Again, I typed out notes and this made it so when I wanted to review, I didn't have to go straight to the book. I could just literally pull up my notes, go through the important stuff that I typed down. So again, I made notes of the guidelines exam. I typed them all up in Word docs and then I had each little study guide just like this to go over for each chapter. With these outlines that I made is in the corner, if you can see there, I put the percentage of the content that's gonna be on the exam. That way, when I'm studying it, I know, okay, this is 20% of the exam. But that's just what I did. Put everything in an outline, everything in a, a study guide, and then just had it all memorized. So once I felt comfortable just with the basic content, the next thing I shifted into was the metabolic equations. So in the very back of the book, you can see here, they have an appendix that goes over how to convert everything, since everything's actually going to be in the metric system. So how the conversions work, and then how to work the formulas. It's all right in the back of the book, you guys. There's no reason to be super scared about it. And because this is a clinical exam, there's going to be some EKG questions on there as well. I had already been working in cardiac rehab, so I was pretty comfortable with reading EKGs and ECGs. Um, but it's good to know 12 lead EKGs going into the exam, what certain rhythms look like, um, and placement of electrodes for 12 lead EKG. You're also going to kind of want to know a little bit about the medications patients are going to be taking. There's a medications appendix, I think it's appendix A, that's in the guidelines book. So that's also something you want to know. At this point, it's a good idea to bust this guy out in the certification review and kind of test yourself to see how much you've retained throughout your study process. I, you know, first test and quiz myself with all the questions, you know, that are in here just to see how well I did. Again, see how much info I retained. But then what I did after that is I made some flashcards. So this is how I could really retain the info real good. So basically what I would do is I would write down the question from the booklet and then on the back would have the answer with the reasoning why. This was a super, super, super good way to really reinforce all that info in your brain, you guys. The process of just writing down the question and the answer really reinforces that back in your brain. So whether it's, you know, the notes you're taking or if you're making flashcards, just writing it all down is going to really help pack that into your long-term memory storage. A couple other tips that I generally like to go by when I'm studying for any sort of exam is you're going to have at least seven exposures to the content. This is what I like to go by for me. You're going to have most of that information converted into your long-term memory. It's still going to be a little bit in the short-term memory, but it's going to be packed in your memory bank at least to where you can retrieve it out or it's familiar to you when you're going through the question. Went through my study guide seven times. I went through the flashcard seven times. I tried to do the certification booklet about seven times. I think I did that one a little bit less, but it's, it's the seven rule, you guys. Seven exposures, so you just wanna really bust through that info, that way you're storing it in your memory. The last couple days leading up to the exam, the things that I tried to memorize the most were honestly the conversion. 
The exam gives you the formulas that you're going to use, but if you don't know how to convert um, the formulas, you're going to be hopeless. So you want to make sure you have the conversions memorized. Again, I'm going to throw this up on the screen, that way you can at least take a look. Um, but that is what worked the best for me. So at this point, you've studied for the exam, everything's ready to go, um, you're feeling good, you're feeling confident, you've studied the material, and it's time to take the exam. Heck yeah, it's an exciting thing. When you're taking the exam, you want to have confidence in yourself. I have studied for this. I know what I'm doing. I am a beast. Having that confidence in your subconscious is extremely important. So just remember, as you're taking the exam, if you run into questions where you really don't know, you can mark it and skip over it. But just know, deep down, that you've got this, man. You've done, you've done the work, you've studied the material, and don't just get mentally hung up on one question that might throw you off. Obviously, make sure you eat like a good breakfast, get good sleep from the night before, um, just be ready to rock and roll on exam day. Uh, vi visualize in your brain, you pass in the exam, you take in the questions, you hit and submit, and boom, it gives you the score right there. It's gonna be a big, nice pass on there. Because just don't psych yourself out, that never helped anyone at all. So that's gonna do it for this video. I hope this video helped out in debunking what you're gonna have to study for, for the CP exam. If you could leave a like, comment, and subscribe, I would love that. It makes me wanna do more stuff like this on this channel, and Good luck on the exam, you guys. You got this. Peace out.